cute, isn't he? This is a golden lion tamarind, and in the 1960s, loss of habitat had reduced the wild population of this beautiful animal to less than 200 known specimens. A captive breeding program has helped to pull the population back from the brink of extinction, but it's still seriously endangered. Scientists predict that in the next 30 years, a quarter of the world's mammal species will face extinction. And this prediction is increasingly seen as a conservative one. The situation is as bad or worse for many birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates. This snail is a lot less cuddly than the tamarind, but no less threatened. And it's this unassuming little snail that has been the catalyst for one of the great ideas in species conservation, the frozen ark. Well, it started really as a result of some studies that we were doing in the South Pacific. And uh, we were looking at the genetic changes that take place during the origin of species. And while we were doing this, the species that we were studying started going extinct. Now, these were snails, and you might not think that the extinction of a few species of snails is very important. But these had been very, very useful in scientific terms. And it was a sort of disaster because they were uh, being eliminated when, just when we were discovering new things about how species originated. It was his work with the Parchula snails that inspired University of Nottingham's Emeritus Professor Brian Clark, along with colleagues Dr Anne Clark and Dr Anne McLaren, to set up the frozen ark. It's the sort of idea that seems so obvious in hindsight. The mission of the frozen ark project is to collect, preserve and store the DNA and viable cells from animals in danger of extinction. It's being developed as a network of international centres and being led by some of the world's foremost research organisations. In the United Kingdom, as well as the University of Nottingham, this includes the Zoological Society of London and the Natural History Museum. If you think back what might happen and what has happened recently, if animals do go extinct, uh, is there anything that we can learn or, or might have learned from their... Uh, from a record of their DNA. If we look back to what's happened over the last 30 years, we've made enormous strides in, in analysing DNA and that, that gives us a lot of information about the life of an organism. I think it would be terrible if we were to turn around in 50 years' time and say, oh, if only we had the DNA of those organisms that have gone extinct in the meantime because we could have learnt so much from them. The Frozen Ark is a unique project. It's designed as a research resource for future generations of scientists ensuring that they have access to stored material that can give them real insight into species that may, by then, be extinct. Samples will be taken from captive breeding programs, zoos and wild populations. Though many museums around the world may store animal tissues, this is often not in a form suitable for the long-term preservation of undamaged DNA. And though there are private collections of frozen DNA in cells, few are aimed exclusively at endangered species. Well, I've been working in the area of cryobiology for a long time, especially with regard to freezing sperm and embryos and things, uh, types of tissue that could be used for breeding. Um, but then with conversations with Brian Clark and Anne Clark and others, um, we thought it would be a good idea to have a, a repository of cells, DNA and so on from um, species which aren't yet extinct but are on the, the verge of extinction. And obviously being in the Zoological Society, we have access to some of this kind of species. We also have access to suitable databases and we have a lot of contacts with other zoos all around the UK and also in Europe and other parts of the world. So we are a natural focus, if you like. Initially, the project will focus on the thousands of animals that are expected to disappear within a few decades. It's not an alternative to conserving live populations, but a logical safeguard against the complete loss of all scientific knowledge of species threatened with extinction. The importance of preserving the DNA is not only a great deal of scientific knowledge, which would otherwise be lost, a very great deal of very great importance, but there's an aesthetic reason too, and that is that we actually want to preserve the things that we know and have seen and have at least seen when watching David Attenborough on the television, all these wonderful creatures that he shows us. We want to, main, we want to maintain not only the pictures of them, but the, the information about them. And, and, and the reason is aesthetic as well as scientific. It, it's it, it's a, 
that ter seem to be terribly important. They shouldn't just destroy the world and not do anything about it. Conservation isn't just about protecting species. It should also look to protect and enhance our scientific knowledge of living things. With large-scale extinctions predicted, the frozen ark could be our last chance to ensure that future generations have knowledge of a time when we still had real biodiversity on this planet. <laughs>